was amazed at the place. I wondered how anything could survive. It was so hot, you know, maybe about 130 degrees Fahrenheit on the ground there, and uh, almost almost no vegetation. You know, it was just such a barren, hard place. It was different in Somalia. It's uh, it's a really hard part of the world, and the people live a very hard life. So the Sanag region is where the Almado mountain range is, and all the residents come out of this area. And a third of the population lives there, and it's their only source of employment and access to any sort of resources. They have no other industry that they can depend on other than the frankincense industry. We had to disrupt what existed there. We had to change things. Dave Sterling and Emily Wright went to northern Somalia and Basaso first, before anyone, before doTERRA really had any strong initiatives happening in that region. And what they saw gave them the idea that we can really make a big change in this region. And they gave us the direction to, you know, you need to go there and you need to fix some stuff and, and make it better because there's a huge need. We had to give them that seed of hope. And it's been amazing to see the change that has happened in just a few years. أنا أقول نفتي ذو حلال عبد الله سعيد عود على حلال إن كنا أنا دلوا محمد عبد الله بالي هذا وأنا دلوا ودي إلى ما أنت بدر ودي وأنا قط صاع من كون صاع رنا يو بورتي كني مي من كحل الإيرمان ثم كرمير كسام رنا مبان نوت ما دي مركا إلى سد هو بيسوم أنا فعتني وصورت مي وإلى هاي بيرتن لسك دبل عليه قون رمي قون كتير عليه مركا إن شغله دم لازم واش شغله بيد عقفي عن هذا هذا ريب كبو ما هنو لكن مر أنو إيب مر كإيب كالله لا السينا الشيرة الشركة لخ لا يو إيب ستوك ما لقى شيء قو العقو رتب دو حكاية بستو وحسن ما لقى ليه العقو كسير يا مثلا لكن واحد هلا يسا عد كايب ستو مر كذا يستي ديار كوتا What you have are individual harvesters who who live in villages and will go collect from a region that they have access to by tribal right. And will then sell to shopkeepers in their village, who then sell down to middlemen, who, who eventually get all that resin to a port and sell it to the Europeans and the Arabs and to us and such. This was all happening without any real organization, and unfortunately, it left the harvesters at a, a real disadvantage because they had no idea the value of their product. They had no, they have no protection. They have no real bargaining power. The harvesters were really getting pennies for their their resin. At the time, it was 0.8 cents per kilo, but there was huge, vast amount of resin moving out, and the harvester it, it was being cheated by the middlemen, and all this resin was going to the UAE, to Yemen, to all these other places. We moved them out of the way, bypassed them, and went directly to the people, formed the cooperatives. No one has ever done that before, to have these landowners and chiefs together, working together and in a cooperative. It's never happened in their history, in fact. One of the benefits of being on the ground and getting to know the area and how the industry works, you can immediately find ways to improve it. We thought that there would be a great benefit to having some more organization. And so we have built warehouses throughout the mountains and large collection sites that function as kind of a co-op and are organizing harvesters, villagers, shopkeepers and, and other traders throughout the industry into kind of one network that is working together and collectively. We're now employing you know, thousands of women who are cleaning the residence, making sure they have safe conditions and are also getting paid well. And this organization has done a lot of things, not only to improve the supply chain, but to provide much more uh, security and employment and fairness for more of the actors in the business. This has required a tremendous amount of building trust and relationships with the many clans that are involved, all the way to coordinating and collaborating with the government in sustainability initiatives that they are working on to ensure that the trees can be around for a very long time. Woman, I want to see that tree real close, as close as possible, okay? Right there? Uh, hush, hush. Yeah. That's a car, Terry, that's, yeah. that's dying. If a tree is over-harvested, what we mean by that is that there's too many cuts on the tree and that the way that the cuts are made are too deep. If there's too many cuts, if they're too deep, if they're too close to the roots, 
Um, all of these things can lead to mortality and death for that tree. doTERRA reached out to me based on my work and wanted to know how to collaborate and how to help. That's what we need more of. We need more companies to to follow this lead um, and to to participate in coming up with solutions and strategies that support a robust frankincense economy and long-term sustainability and support for the communities who deliver this raw material to the world. We feel very responsible to uh, make sure that we can maintain the sustainability and do it in a way that is going to be long-term beneficial for the people and the trees. It's been amazing to see the change that has happened in just a few years. To look at the women who didn't think that then anything was going to change in their life and to now be able to come in and pay them a fair wage that they can depend on year after year after year, to pay their husbands a fair wage, to go out and harvest these trees that have been passed down from father to son, from generation to generation, and to educate their children, to give them a chance to truly be able to change their circumstance. And we are all the beneficiaries to continue to use this amazing, beautiful oil. Through schooling, through supply of medicine and food and fairer wages and better work environments, I think the work that has been done there has been, has been critical and will be long-lasting.